So I thought we'd take the previous hood model that we made and just show you how we can create a frayed cloth look to that. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but um, for the purposes of what we're doing here, it's going to be good enough, I hope. I'm going to press Shift F to see our polyframes and Shift D to turn off dynamic, this button here, and look at what we have. The one thing that we don't want right now is thickness to this. So to get rid of that thickness, you notice we have an exterior and an interior group, the green split uh, divided by the orange here. So I'm just going to hold down Control and Shift and click on one of the red verts here, and that will hide that entire interior. From there, we can go down to Modify Topology and hit Delete Hidden, and that will get rid of that geometry for us. So right now, this is still slightly problematic. There's still some areas that I'd like to clean up. So for example, I know if I do a Z-Remesh -remesh on this, Z-Remesh respects 90 degree edges, so it will try and keep this. So what I'm going to do is make my brush nice and small, hover over an edge, press B, Z, M, and hovering over that edge, I'm going to make sure stitch is turned on and to end point. I'm just going to take this point and just stitch it. All right, I'll take this point and stitch it to there, just to get rid of that little kink that we had in our model. Now there are some triangles and stuff on this model. Um, not too concerned about that at the moment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Z-Remesh the bigger concern for me is that we have some small polygons and some large polygons and we want to even the distribution of this out a little bit more in order for the micro poly to work that little bit better. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to make sure adaptive is turned off and I'm just going to choose, I don't know, three or four thousand polygons, let's say three, uh, and turn everything off basically and just say Z remesh this. So you can see now that the polygon distribution is a lot more even than it was before. It's still not perfect but it's a lot more even than it was before. Um, so I'm gonna take this as a start point. You can see it has introduced some, some triangles um, and that does happen. Uh, and if that happens, we can just turn on the same and hit zero measure again. And often it will give you a better result the next time around. You can see that that's already got rid of that. Um, and we can do this multiple times if you want. Um, what you will find is that it starts losing some shape. So while we had some of this shape, as I went forward with the zero mesh, we started getting softer and softer. So be careful you don't go too far on that. Uh, but yeah, it, it you can keep on zero meshing uh, until you get rid of most of your problems. So from here, we're now ready to start creating cloth. Um, and the way we do that is to turn on dynamic. So I'm gonna press D to turn on dynamic. That's got that turned on. And then we basically use, we have two subdivisions here. So if I turn this down to zero for the moment, just so we can see what we're looking at, Dynamic turned on uh, with, with zero uh, sub smoothing won't actually show you a difference in your model because we haven't smoothed it. But if we turn on micro poly, these are the, the cloth materials that we can actually use. So each one of these little objects here will basically replace each of the polygons that we see here. And this is, this is why we wanted the polygons to be roughly the same size where we could, even though they're still quite a way off here. We're gonna go ahead anyway. So I'll click micro poly and we can basically choose which one we want. So I'll just choose twill, for example. Um, and as I do that, you can see the twill, this object had, the original object had multiple poly groups on each of the threads within this particular object here. So if I press shift F, we can see what this looks like. It's, it's not bad, you know, it's got some problems. Um, it, it merges here, for example. And the reason it does that and reacts weirdly here, if I turn it off for a second, is that basically we've got a point with three edges here rather than four edges. So ideally you'd like four edges everywhere, but three will cause some problems. This one has five edges. So if you look at that, you'll see that it, it will react a little strangely there. But these are things you have to live with. Um, you can either go in and fix them with the Z modeler brush one by one uh, or ignore them and, and just go with it. So you can see here where our polygons were nice and tight together. It's very tight and where they were slightly larger like here, then they're, they're uh, slightly looser. So we could, again, we could, you know, we could move these and try and even that out a little bit if that's what you want. But being aware that this is also changing the shape that you had, and that's kind of up to you to, to decide uh, which is more important. So from here, I'll turn this back on. I'll press Shift F, so we turn this off. We can manipulate this. All we're, manip we're manipulating at the moment is is the pol is at these polygons. That's all we're doing when we're moving here. We're just moving these. If I press shift to smooth, I'm just moving, smoothing these out. 
Um, so I'm, we're basically, we're still in, in control here. We can still, that's all we're actually moving is those polygons. So that's why this is gonna react fairly quickly in our viewport here. So because this is still very few polygons, it's effectively just this amount of polygons, we can still use our cloth brushes on this. So if we go to our dynamics menu here, I'm just going to open this up here for a second. I'll close down the brushes. I'll take our dynamics and drop this over here. If we say collision volume, so it, could, it will recalculate um, what that collision volume is. We can turn on our micro poly while we have a look at the results. I'll press shift F to turn this off. I'll press B, T and C to choose our transpose cloth brush. And from here, we can actually, we're still moving the cloth around, but you can see it's moving around with that kind of, uh, with that micro mesh or micro poly uh, rather on the material here. And even if we do a simulation here, I'll increase the amount so it's slightly more accurate and I'll say run simulation. We can do that and as soon as I click again, it will turn it off. So we're still working with effectively a cloth. We could be using our cloth brushes here as well. But let's say we're, we're actually happy with the results and we've relaxed that a little bit and it seems to be working for us. First thing I would do is always hit the align button. You'll see that it will actually do a slightly better job of aligning these, these polygons for us. Um, and if you rotate Z, sometimes you'll see the results of this. If you hit a couple of times, it may give you a slightly different look to it. So especially here on the cheek, for example, when I rotate this time, if, I, if you want that kind of look, that's one way to go about it. Um, so I would, I prefer this one. So I'm going to stay with this. And now we have to look at the scale of our model here. So the scale of our twill right now is based on this object here filling each of those polygons in 3D space. So if you imagine any given one of these polygons is filled with this object. So if we were to turn on smoothing here, say to one, for example, press shift F to turn that on or up, shift F to toggle our frame. You can see that these polygons are now actually a quarter of the size here. So this micro poly is obviously going to be a lot smaller on our model. So as I make this, uh, put this back down to zero, or to one, it's gonna make it a lot smaller, two, it's gonna make it a lot smaller again. So you don't wanna to go too small on this, but we do want enough polygons to be able to fray these edges here a little bit and to make it look like cloth. So I'm gonna go with this one, even though it is starting to give us some, some moiré patterns. Um, I'll go with this for the moment. Once you're happy with it, uh, whatever that might be, and that's a combination of whatever you Z-remeshed plus your subdivision levels, uh, once you're happy with that, and also with your actual uh, micro poly, I mean, if we had chosen something that was even more uh, detailed, you're going to get much smaller. So you kind of have to play between all of them and find the result that you're looking for. I'm just going to choose twill again. So from here, all we need to do now is actually apply this, and that will convert this 2,000 polygons that we currently have, even though it looks like more, into real geometry. So when I hit apply, you can see it's now become 1.1 million polygons. So now when I'm moving, I'm actually moving each individual uh, polygon within this. So that's fine, but how, how can we use this to get that frayed look? So uh, we can, what we can do is we can delete, we can create a group and then delete some of these. So I'm going to press control to go into the uh, mask brush. I'm going to make sure lasso is turned on. I'm just going to kind of draw out some shapes from here and say I want to cut this bit out and maybe I want to cut out a bit here and if I want to get rid of that control and alt we'll get that back for me and maybe I'll cut out a little bit here so I'm going to cut out these pieces here for example and from that all the only thing I need to do if I press shift f is to press Control W because Control W will take any masked object and basically make it one poly group. So from there to delete that, we need to hit Control and Shift and click on that new poly group and then click on it again to hide it. That's now hidden that. And now we can go down to our Modify Topology and hit Delete Hidden. And then now that's gone. So with that gone, we now have um, a tattered piece of cloth, but it doesn't look very tattered. So what we can do now is start using the poly groups that we have to our advantage. So a normal move brush, BMV, will just take a big area and just start moving that whole area, which isn't very helpful to us. What we want to do is be able to pull on each of these threads at any given stage. So the way we do that is to press BMT and that will change to the move topological. 
what this will do is it will look underneath your, your cursor and whatever polygroup it finds, whichever one you clicked on at that point, that's the only one it will move. It won't move any other one. So that allows us now to start pulling out these threads and making this look a little bit more tattered than it was. I actually don't need to see the polygroups here. I can turn that off because I know it's just gonna pick whatever thread I happen to have underneath my cursor and make that a the one that it's going to select. So now we can start picking random ones here. The scale of our brush is going to define how much of that thread we, we start moving around. So we can start breaking up that surface now by just clicking around and deciding which ones to pull and which ones to leave. And how much we do that is up to us. At any given stage we decide we want to delete something, we can again just do the same thing, either hold control and make a selection and then convert that to a polygroup and delete it. Or if we hold down control and shift, we can actually choose the lasso button. And from there we can actually lasso an area out and just hold down the alt button along with control and shift and that will delete that. So now we can go selectively through and start deleting areas that we don't like or edges that are too clean for what we're looking for that we know we want to mess up a little bit and then if you have a shortcut for it uh, which I would advise doing control alt d or something like that you can delete those hidden polygons and then go back to your move topological brush bmt and start moving some of those extra threads that you now have to create that kind of uh, threadbare look that you're looking for. Again, if you want to move a large area, BMV, take your, your move brush, just move the whole thing. Um, if that's what you're looking for, if you just want to close an area up and you can do anything from here. You can use a pinch brush um, if you want to pinch areas together, but it's it's going to squash stuff. So you know, maybe not so much. We can create thickness on this if you want to. You can go to edge loop turn off, turn your poly loops down to one, your polish down to zero, define the thickness, make sure your bevel is turned off uh, and basically hit panel loops and that will actually give you thickness to your cloth now and if you're going to be 3D printing or something like that and you want to dynamax this afterwards um, that will work, uh, it's worth considering doing but um, otherwise you know if it's just for a render this is often good enough. Uh, the, another alternative is to turn dynamic back on turn your, your simulations back to zero, turn your micro poly off, and then we just use the thickness that's in dynamic. That will allow us to preview a thickness to this without actually having thickness in the model. So we still have 1 million polygons. Uh, we haven't actually divided it at all, but we do. We are getting a preview of thickness, which we can even render to see what that would look like. Uh, it's a little bit thick here, but you get the idea. I'll just make that a little bit thinner here. So how good this ends up looking is really on you, uh, how much time you spend in doing it and where you do it. Uh, I did this very quickly just by way of demonstration, but uh, if you do want to make sure that your loops are going the right way, you're going to need straighter loops and polygons with, with four sides rather than three if possible and kind of pay more attention to that kind of detail. But uh, definitely this is a, a very workable solution. Um, and if it's just for a render uh, that you're going to paint over or whatever, then this is perfect. Well, hope this helps and as usual, consider subscribing. All right, bye.